Hey everybody, welcome to episode five of Hashtag Strong. I am so excited to be introducing you to our next guest. But before we do, for those of you who are watching us for the first time, I want to put Strong into context. Strong is a journey of stories. It's women sharing their stories so that we can be creating a community of strong female role models for our younger female audience. We want to be taking these interviews around the world where we could be meeting women from diverse cultures, diverse societies, nationalities, languages. It doesn't matter who you are and where you are. We want to be sharing these stories because I believe that when we can have conversations with real women about real life stories, we are able to support and empower our younger generation. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to our next guest. Nancy Haynes. Welcome to Strong Nancy. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me here. I'm so excited to have you on the show. I'm excited guys. I'm so excited to be here. I feel like I've known you forever but when I was <laughs> reflecting on how much time I think it's not even a year and a half since no. we first met. No. It's been about a year and a half or a little over. So meeting you that first time I was in the audience and I was watching you talk to our teenagers, our audience of teenagers. And I remember thinking that woman has a special something and it's almost contagious. And so inviting you to talk on our episode made absolute sense to me because I want other women, younger generations, women of my generation, women of older generations to be in touch with women just like you. So whenever you're ready, yes. we'll get started. All right. <laughs> In order to tell our story, I believe that we have to start right at the beginning. And for me, that is where we define who we are. So Nancy, who is Nancy Haynes? Nancy is an ever-changing individual. Uh, she is definitely growing, developing. She is passionate about the youth, uh, about the power of the messages that we have for them. Uh, it is our responsibility in our generation to now be able to cater to them. Um, who am I? I'm an imperfect individual and I am embracing the me. <coughs> that is continuously changing with life. Life happens, we evolve. And so I cannot say that this is a label, like this is who I am and boom, it's there. I feel like it's consistently changing and that identity is continuously evolving. So I find that that's a journey within itself. Excellent. So I'm gonna dig a little bit deeper. Ooh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what roles Nancy plays in life. I am a wife. I am a sister. I am a daughter. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I'm a role model. And I think those are, so far, those are the ones I can identify. But those are the main roles that I carry on on a day to day basis. Which brings us perfectly to our next question. What does it feel like to be Nancy on a typical day? On a typical day, I usually, in the mornings, spend at least 10 to 15 minutes on meditation. I honestly cannot tell you how important it is for me to find that centered place, to find that just moment of just peace where I can just be me and just soak in whatever I need to be doing, whether it's something that I'm feeling that I need to let go or something that I'm like excited and I'm bringing in. But those 10 to 15 minutes are mine and I can do whatever I want with them. So that's my, the very, very beginning. Then I go into a workout. So I get to go to the gym. Have, I love, love, love going to the gym. Mm -hmm. It's my way of getting stuff out. Honestly, I am constantly going through my affirmations while I'm working out. Uh, because of the changes that I've gone through, even health-wise, and a move that I did from LA, it really shifted my eating habits, my, my daily habits. 
And that has really, like, it, it kind of keeps me on a routine. Like, once I do that, I feel like, okay, I've, I've accomplished for the day. <laughs> I'm like, yes. <laughs> then I get home and then I start focusing in on the work that I'm going to do, the topics that I'm going to focus on, one, for my online program. Every week that we are working on something and really find, digging deep and really helping, supporting women with that, I have to figure out what stories I'm going to share to kind of link the message together. Because it's so easy to just educate and give, but when you link it to a story, I feel like it, it really, people capture that and they like soak it in a lot easier than just like educating. Um, so that's one thing. Um, and also I have networking groups that I attend to. So if I have to go to in the mornings and I will, if not, I spend my day doing that, kind of just getting ready for what topics I want to discuss um, on social media. And, you know, sometimes it's not necessarily the topic. It's just whatever's happening or whatever question I was given. So then I'm like, okay, this is what I need to talk about. And I make a list of like little things that I have to do for the day. But um, my day, then that's the rest of the day. I think my day ends with getting food prepped. I need to cook for me. One, my Mexican background. I miss the food <laughs> and they don't have it here. So I'm like, I incorporate a little of it into my meals that I have. And in the evenings, I usually spend the evenings with my husband, whether it's watching a series on Netflix or actually just reading. Sometimes he's been um, one that has taught me a lot to like on his reading. When I see him reading, I'm like, you know what? I need to be doing that too. So more and more that has become a part of a daily habit. Sounds it sounds like a fun filled day, but also pretty, pretty busy. It is. It normally is. And norm I think you as an entrepreneur, you carry such a big responsibility. And one day I could be wearing the marketing hat and the next day I'm taking it off. The next day I'm wearing the content hat. The next day I'm wearing the business development hat. And I think that's why it's just consistently every day is so different mm -hmm. because whatever hat I'm going to wear that day, those are the tasks that come with that hat. So. So Nancy, when we look at someone just like you, uh, an entrepreneur, a career woman, you're beautiful, you're successful, the younger generation look to women just like you and say, wow, that she makes it look so easy. When nobody's watching, what do you do with your time alone that helps you to be who you are and make it look so natural and so easy? And you know, that's such a misconception. And that's something that I feel so strongly about. It's kind of like Instagram. You post the best of you. You're never going to post a day that you're crying, that you had an anxiety attack and you're like, oh guys, here I am. Like, it's not. You always post the best of the best out there. And so people have this perception of who you are, but they don't ever ask you about the journey. They don't ever ask you about how did you get to where you are today? And that's the piece that I find people want to, it's like that, that instant gratification. I want to be like that. How do I do that? Like what pill do I take? It's like, and, and that's what we see a lot with the youth working with the youth. They, they don't see the in between stage. So when you're alone, how do you spend that time? It depends. It depends. I think there are days because of, I, because of wearing so many hats and the identity crisis that we go through, whether we've moved to another country, whether we just got married, whether we're leaving school, whatever, there's always a change and a shift in our identity. We are now a college student, or now we are now a mom, or we are now whatever, that it requires daily habits that really keep you in the line and focused on where you're going. And getting to know yourself, it's kind of like dating yourself again. Mm -hmm. um, the identity right now is like, for me, is like learning the whole marriage life again. And in just understanding being an entrepreneur again, but in a whole new country. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, honestly, like the, the habits that have been created daily, a lot of it has to do with the mood that I'm in. Okay. And I hate to admit that, but there are days where I don't want to share what I'm going through, where you feel like an imposter, where you feel like there's a day that I'm just crying all day because I'm frustrated, because I don't know how to do something. And there's nobody else I can ask. Like there's nobody in my, you know, in my apartment where I'm like, oh, this is frustrating. And for me, 
my way to let it out is crying. So I have to just let it out and I cry and I have my moment. But I will say, I always honor my feeling. If that day I know is just a crappy day, I have to honor that. And if that just means me staying in bed and like not doing anything, I have to honor that. Because I don't want to do anything, any work that I do when I'm in that kind of low vibration where I'm like, you know what, today's just not the day and it's okay. I feel like a lot of, we have to always be on our A game and we have to always be presentable. And it's like, no, we don't. There are some days that I don't want to get up because of the pressure of life, the expectations that people have. You know, they see you and then they're like, oh, you're like always put together and you're always this. And inside you're like, if you just ask me how I'm doing, you would get a different answer. And don't you find that we do get asked, how are you? But it's almost an unconscious, clear understanding that we don't share really how we are. Do people really want to know how we are? What do you think about that? You said the key question, do people really want to know how I'm doing? I'm very, I can, I'm very sensitive. So when somebody does ask, oh, so how are you doing? I can immediately, it's just a quick interaction. It's not going to be like, oh, I'm going to sit here and tell you everything that's going on. But when I feel that moment, and I say it like, for example, my husband, when he comes home and, oh, how was your day? My usual reaction was, it's fine. Because I'm in it, you know what, the label. I'm an independent woman. I can handle this. I've handled myself all my life. I don't need you to jump into my life and tell me what I, you know, not. And I'm not the nagging wife that is going to be complaining. So you know what? I'm fine. My day was great. And then he would leave. And then I could just feel myself just like bawling my head off. And then it was like, okay, back to work. And just so much coming up, emotions coming up. So when you ask me about little things that I do, when I have these moments of like the emotion comes up, when I doubt myself, when I'm fearful of something, I normally always have a notebook. Okay. I have a ton at home, <laughs> but I have them. And the moment that I feel something coming up, I start writing because I don't want it to stay here. I need it to come out. And I always like just write out the emotion and then close the book, put it away. And I just kind of get into like, okay, it's going to be okay. Self-soothing, mm -hmm. self-soothing. And for me, that's writing. For other people, it could be listening to a song. There's days where I'm like, okay, I'm not feeling it. What song gets me like, you know when it takes you back to certain moments when like you were with friends or like whoever, and boom, like I'll find the song, I'll turn it on, and I'm just like, I swear in my living room, like if people saw what I did. <laughs> You know, I have to like get in the mood and I'm like, okay, this gets me like pumped up again. Okay, then I'm ready to go back. So it's little things here and there. You know what another thing that I do, and I know this is crazy, but I'll go on Facebook and I love Ellen. Oh, yes. I laugh so much when I watch her stuff and every time when I feel like crap. And you can ask my husband, I promise. I literally, I'll put on one of her the videos and I'm cracking up and I'll watch a few and then I feel like, okay, everything's okay like okay i got this i got this and then i can get back into doing the work that i do but sometimes i do it throughout the day like when i'm writing something and i get stuck or when i'm like oh, should i do this should i not you know i'm not even really in that space but you know a successful woman what does that really mean is it the woman that can just that has a black card that can just go shopping like well i don't have that so then does that mean i'm you know you start like going through all this and then you kind of like center yourself again and it's like wait Success to me is getting through the day, mm -hmm. today, like, and that's it. Yeah. And so that, you start shifting the definition of success. You start shifting the definition of the independent woman because that independent woman needs to be able to connect. And how could you, if you're always perfect and you're always like, no, you're not. And I feel like people connect with you when you, you're real, mm -hmm. you're relatable. True. Like, you know, I've gone through something like that. And then they're like, oh, really? You, you? Like, yeah. And then you share that and it becomes that connection and it kind of feels fulfilling. And that's what this is all about. It's about creating that community. I know it's hard for people to just tell each other how they feel and maybe watching something like this will say, oh, wow, you know, I thought she would just have, you know, she just looks perfect. So it's great to be able to be sharing. So just in recapping, and I think it's important for young 
young girls and, and women of all ages to understand the strategies, the tools that different people take that might be effective for them too. So I heard you say, first thing in the morning as I ground myself, I meditate, that's my time alone. And then I go to the gym, that's my time alone. Um, and then journaling, my time alone, or honoring how I'm feeling is, my, is what I do for myself, listening to music. All these little things are Nancy's way of yes. just being Nancy when nobody's watching. And I think doing those things gives you that grounding that makes everybody look at you from the outside and probably say, wow, whatever she's drinking, I want, I want that. Some, I want some of that juice. <laughs> so Nancy, if you were 14 or 15 or even 16 years old all over again, if you could go back to that younger you, what would you say to her that would help her on the journey to where you are today? Oh, have fun. Okay. Have fun. I think being the oldest child out of five kids, that responsibility that you had to grow up a lot faster than what I would have liked, I didn't, I cannot say I truly enjoyed my childhood. Like, I think I resented my siblings for playing. Like, they got to play all day and I had chores and I had to get them done. So if I could go back to that 15 and 16 year old and just tell her like, just have fun and take it one day at a time. Just have fun. I don't think we really emphasize that. Even in kids today, they're in, you know, baseball or whatever sport, a sport that they're in, they have to be the best at it. Practice at this time, violin at this time, ballerina at that time. Like, it's like parents are like shoving all this stuff in the schedule and it's like, can we? Just let them, that creativity flow. Like, let me be a child, mm -hmm. and at 15 and 16, let me get creative. Like, give me stuff that lets my mind, like, explore and expand. They don't. I can say it even for my parents. It, everything was fear-based. Don't do that, because you'll do that. Don't do this, because then this will happen. And you, you constantly create those habits, and, and you realize how much impact they have True. the older you get. And that having fun, how would that have helped you to becoming who you are today? Having fun would have allowed me to just embrace me. I think the moment that it was like, you must behave like this, you must do this, all of that, it became that box, that label. You must be like this. You are a conservative, Catholic, Mexican, duh, 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 all these like labels. And it's like, and this is how that person behaves and that's you. Who told you that's how you had to be? Because this is something that I, I see when I'm working with the youth is it's an understanding that they have about what they should be or who they should be. And I always wonder who tells us? So in reflection of who you were, going back to that person, who told you you had to be that way? Or how did you understand that you had to be that way? I think it started with parents. Because when I did have fun, like when I did kind of, like I'll give you an example. We used to live in these apartments back in, in Los Angeles and there was not a lot of kids around, but there was a lot of boys around. So I loved playing marbles with them, like in the dirt, like we would just like flick them and play. And the moment my mom would see me, like it was like, no, like that's not what you need to be, like go inside. You know what? If you have free time, go inside and clean. It was, is this consistent, like, you need to be productive. You need, like, fun? What are you talking about fun? Like, no, get back in there. And you, that, you start subconsciously taking that on as, oh, I cannot have fun. I need to be productive all the time. Mm -hmm. So even to this day, my mom cannot sit down and watch a movie. Just sit. Because she has to, you know, while I'm sitting here, let me do the laundry. And while I'm doing the laundry, I can actually clean this back here for you. Like, it's this consistent, I must. Like, it's like I must prove that I am worthy mm -hmm. by cleaning, by cooking, by whatever that is. And so all of those beliefs start coming. And then the aunties and the uncles, they're the exact same. So then everybody around you is consistently like, you must, it. they reinforce everything. Exactly. Everything. So then what else do you have? You, you spend most of the time with them anyway. So. Where do you get the little moment of, I get to just step out for a second and just be me? Like, who do I want to be? 
That's a big one, isn't it? And it, it's not just something that happens in that one snapshot of your life. It really, it sets the precedence for how your mind talks to you as you grow older. Yes. That voice in your, in your head. Yes. So Nancy, you are living in Dubai, an entrepreneur, you're married, you are living your best life. What are some of the challenges that people on the outside have no idea that you might be struggling with in your life today? That I might be struggling in my life today. That's a good one. Um, I think it's a consistent, I feel like it's a pressure. There's a pressure to reach certain milestones in the business world, in the business network. You have to have a certain amount of followers. Mm. You have to have a certain amount of uh, exposure. You need to be more visible. You, ne you need, you need, you need to do this. You need. There's a list of about a thousand things I need to be doing. And when I put it down and I look at it as a whole, I'm not gonna lie, it is so overwhelming. And those are the moments that I like, I want to give up mm. and people don't know that yeah there are days where i have to show up and inside i'm like i literally want this to be done like i don't want to do this anymore it's too much pressure but it's the pressure from the outside yes that i'm taking on and i see this a lot with women that i meet and and i see this a lot with the youth as well when i sit down and i ask them what are some of the challenges you face? And it's that self-doubt. It's that, that fear of if I look back and I see where I've come, it's almost scary because I don't know if I have what it takes to keep going. How do you face those challenges? What are your, what are your tips to, to facing the obstacles of self-doubt or of waking up and saying, I just can't do this today. I can't be me today. How do you overcome it? A lot of it is affirmations that I've created for myself. And this is like really important for anybody. Create affirmations that resonate with you. You speak a certain way. Those words resonate with you a certain way. They don't resonate with me. So immediately your affirmation does not work for me. So in that moment is creating those affirmations that I need in the moment. And I have them recorded on my phone, mm -hmm. even on a taxi ride that I'm going from somewhere, you know, from one client to the next, or if I'm just getting home, I literally, I'll put them, I'll put the earphones on and just give myself that. It's like food for the soul. And we talk a lot about affirmations and I know that we're in similar professions in personal development and professional development, helping clients all the time. And the one thing I have to admit, Nancy, and, I, and I'm sure that you might be able to relate with this, and you probably hear this from clients as yeah. well, is sometimes these affirmations, they just don't feel authentic. So how do you get around that saying it to yourself, but you still have that feeling of like, I just can't be Nancy today. I have this thing that I do with clients called the compassion rampage. And you, if, if you're not ready to receive, because you looking in the mirror, you saying the affirmations is you receiving. So you're not in a place to receive. So you have to get yourself mentally in a place of receiving to then be able to allow it to come. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I change the wording. Sometimes instead of saying I am whatever, I change it to I am in the process of, which takes that little bit of pressure off of like I am in the process of feeling completely confident. I am in the process of whatever. I add the words. And if not, the rampage of compassion is I start with owning what it, exactly how I feel. I feel like crap today. Mm. I don't feel worthy enough to even step out today. I don't feel like getting ready. I don't feel really, I don't feel good at all today. Even though I feel bad, mm -hmm. I know that there's a part of me that knows deep down inside that I'm gonna get through the day. Even though I feel like crap today, I know that I have a chance to turn this around. And you start like shifting slowly from that into compassion because I feel like when we're talking to a friend, what advice do you give them? Mm -hmm. Like even though you feel like terrible today, just know that tomorrow is going to be another opportunity for you. How come we don't talk to ourselves like we that? Don't. We don't. We're so right. We don't. We're so hard on ourselves. But I think it's also about getting to a point of that self-reflection. And, and I don't think uh, we are who we are without looking back at the pieces that we've taken with us. 
And I say this a lot with the youth and I say this to friends and sometimes I try to remind myself too, but as you say, we're not as forgiving with ourselves as we would be with those that we care about. So understanding that we are who we are because of where we've been, I think it's important to acknowledge where we've been. So I'm going to ask you the biggest question, and I know okay. that you've been expecting it. <laughs> and Strong is about sharing our journey. It's about sharing our stories and creating a community where we could watch this episode every week and say, this week someone is going to be really authentic. What was the hardest challenge or even trauma that you faced this far in your life? Oof. Um, I think the hardest was starting with my sister's death. When she passed, everything around us shifted. My mom was not the same person and she was a rock. So she was not the same person. Dad wasn't the same person. Life for everybody completely changed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, un unless you go through it, you have no idea no. if you're doing something right or if you're doing something wrong. Everybody had their comments. You should be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. Put, sell her stuff. Don't do that. Like it was this constant like, can I just be in my pain? Just, let, just honor me in my pain. And it was so hard for people to like accept that. Yeah. And then they were going through their pain too. And everybody trying to understand why. Um, Unfortunately, when my sister passed, she was with a friend in the car. And we, so for us, it was like, how come her friend survived? Yeah. How come she didn't? And it was this consistent, like, questioning all the time. And then I got anxiety attacks. Uh, I got fear. At, the night was like the worst possible thing for me. And I couldn't shut my eyes. Even when I would shower, I would need somebody in the bathroom with me because the moment I would shut my eyes, it was like, what if she's there? What if this is just a, dr what if it's a nightmare? Like, and I couldn't do it. And it was tough to see me, that independent girl that defaces everything and overcomes everything, to be weak, to be broken to like the core. And what was the word that you heard a lot of? You need to be strong. Yeah. <laughs> It you is. need to be strong. It really, really is. Sorry, I'm getting emotional no, here. Okay. <laughs> and, and we're not going to edit out these emotions because somebody out there is watching this and relating to what we're talking about. So it's important that we are authentic. And in, in the process of being authentic, we have to be able to show our community that it's okay to be Nancy, but it's also okay you're human. I think that comes a lot with it because the impact was so strong that within, I got married and then three years, three months, I'm sorry, three months after to the day is when my sister passed. So me trying to get into this marriage and then this happens, it, it, it completely was a big reason why I was no longer the same person that this person married. And so like right after that, like a year and a half after, uh, two years after that, it, it just everything shifted. Your life, your perception in life changes. Like everything has shifted, and and I and I get it now because it's been so long. But that divorce was probably the best thing that could have happened to me because I realized so much from it, so much, which is why I do what I do today. The confidence in myself to be able to say no, you are not the right guy for me. That one was a big one. I said yes, knowing that that wasn't for me. Really being able to speak my truth, to say, I'm going through a big change, can you support me? Where that was not there. And now I get it, now I, I'm understanding of the situation, but to hit death in the family and then divorce right after, your whole world is flipped upside down. You have no idea if what you're doing is right or if it's wrong. Some days you're, okay, I'm getting better, and then other days you're like, what is happening? It's like the ground's been pulled out from underneath 100%. Feet. 100, and this is where, like, your identity. If you're not 
grounded in your identity and like so connected to who you are, which is why we go through these moments where I still go through these moments, but I can get myself up. Yeah. Like, I know I'm gonna go through it and I'm okay with it. Like, I'm like, yep, okay, it's gonna happen. It doesn't scare me as much as it did before. When I knew it was coming, I could feel myself like slowly drifting away, not really messaging people back, not really communicating with anybody, just kind of getting back into my dark space and nobody knew. Nobody knew. Like everybody thought, gosh, she's doing so well. She's doing so well. strong. She's so strong. <laughs> And it She's was so the complete opposite because yeah. the moment I would get into my apartment and close that door, I became a whole nother person, that broken person that I didn't want anybody to see. And I felt like I cannot because I'm labeled the independent girl who just does da 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 da. And it's like, you know what? I finally took that label and said, I'm going to make that label that it suits me. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that I push away everybody who like is wanting to help, I reach out now and say, you know, you were talking to me about that one day about just having lunch. Can we just have lunch? I just need to like not think about anything. And it was like, oh, and it's ripping that label and just owning my own version of what that woman is for me. Who was your tribe? I think it's important that women, men, youth, that we have a tribe. And by tribe, I mean, it's our people, the people that we can just take the mask off and just be imperfectly perfect, as yes. Brene Brown would say. Yes. Who was your tribe? I had at that time uh, a group online, a Facebook group, a nonprofit group called Sisterhood Connections. It's no longer up, but there was just a group of women in there that anything you needed, you could just put in there. Even if it was a prayer request, you would put it in there and just state what you needed. But the great thing about that was my mentor was in there. Obviously, she's the one who started it. And then my two best friends were in there. And as, as, as long as I can say, and this is a 25 plus year relationship, that friendship has stayed strong, a lot of it, because of our faith. When we've been, like, we've just been so raw, like raw yeah. with each other, where we just, look, I'm going through hell this week. Can you guys just like keep me in prayer, please? Or like send positive thoughts, positive vibes, whatever. I just need support. And that's what I've been getting. It's so important. And I think the youth don't um, have that tribe. Last week we met Aya, who was 14 years old. And she talked about her biggest challenge, feeling disconnected, not really knowing who she could talk to in her age group. And I think the secret to connection, a human connection, really is about deep connection. Nancy, going back to the challenges, losing your sister, getting divorced, moving country, feeling a disconnection from who you were then to who you are now, looking back at watching your first female role model, your mom, and seeing how strong she had to be and then seeing how those changes went. What are you celebrating today? It's kind of like I see us passing through that, that rite of passage that we've, we've, we've done all these things and, and hey, I'm still here. I, <laughs> whew, I'm still here, I've survived. Really? Yeah, yes. and so what are you celebrating today and saying, you know what, I, I survived and I'm here and I am aspiring to. I celebrate my persistence because I see, I see all of that. And, and in that moment of looking back, just even in this conversation, like I'm like, oh my gosh, I really have gone through hell and back. <laughs> But I'm still here and I'm still chugging along. You and it, the thing is like, I'm celebrating that I didn't give up. Even though there are days that I want to give up yeah. and it's okay. But then I know that the next day I get back up and I give it another try. And that's something that I feel for me is something that I want to celebrate for me. And even for people out there who want to listen to this is the moment you decide that you're not going to give up on yourself, you fall and you crawl. And there are days when you are like dragging yourself like through the day, but it's okay. Yeah. 
It's the one thing that you can change every day. One thing that you decide to do every day to just get you, even if it's like a little centimeter closer to where you want to be, but at least there's movement. And what's that one thing that we can do to help you on your strong journey? Not just for me, but for a lot of women who have a purpose in whatever they're doing, please support them. Just support them. If, you, if all it is is resharing a video, uh, tagging them on something that you want to post, like for the awareness to grow. A lot of us are going through so much and we do it for celebrities. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at this person did that. And it's so easy for people to do that yet for so many women that have such a powerful message. It's like they get sent to the back because, oh, the new bag is out or the new whatever celebrity stuff that's happening. And it's like, why don't we start bringing some of these women that really have a purposeful message and bring that to the forefront and just share something that they've done. Support them. Supporting other women. Men. Support other women that Su have. Support other women. Support the community. Support those people around you. But Nancy, how do we support you? How do you support me? Because I, and, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you again because yes. I see strong women almost every day. And the one thing that I see that we have in common yeah. is we're so shy to ask for support. <laughs> we do. We do. So we need to change that for the youth because I think in being strong, we have to be vulnerable. We have to allow ourselves to be human. And in my reflection of life, and when I look back at, I have two daughters, or I had two daughters, and I think what I really didn't do enough of before that I'm changing now is letting them see that I can be me, but guess what? I can be vulnerable too. And it's okay. So how can we support you on your strong journey? I will tell you what, I'm gonna get creative here. <laughs> For those that are watching, one takeaway that you had from the video. Okay. Post it. Mm -hmm. Whether it was a quote, whether it was a, a message that you got that really inspired you or that helped you. Post it and tag me. Okay. So if you're out there and you're watching Nancy on this episode and there was one thing or more than one thing that you heard her saying and that you thought that inspired me or that really that really helps me post it and share it and let nancy feel the love yes yes let nancy yes. feel the love i think that brings us to a wrap here nancy it has just been i mean i love talking to you <laughs> you are one of my go-to people although we haven't known each other for a long time you left me with a deep understanding of you get me and not only do you get me you're also someone that i would very proudly sit down with my daughter and say listen to nancy she she gets it she gets it so i just want to thank you for coming and giving us your time and i know that there are going to be millions of women out there watching this saying wow thank you thank you for having me so this brings us to the end of episode five with Nancy Haynes. And if you're just watching us now for the very first time, I hope that this episode leaves you inspired and really understanding that these episodes are not about the surface conversation. It's really about getting deep, understanding women's stories, because I believe that the only way that we can empower the youth is by letting them understand the steps that we take along this journey we call strong. Thank you for watching.